So there we go. Uh, day two in uh, DCS World in uh, A10 Learnings. Gonna be la last time we left off here. We did a uh, startup and the fundamentals, some basic stuff. So now the next step will be uh, takeoff, basic handling, and we'll see if we can get maybe navigation and landing, depending on how long it'll take to get through all those. But yeah, this is gonna be the continuation. That way, you guys can. some servers I'm going to try to make these videos For me, if I need to go back and relearn, kind of just relook through things. Gosh, I love this point though. Yeah. There we go. Let me just get my track IR nice and set up before audio starts to kick in. Hopefully, the in game audio is not too loud and you guys can still hear me pretty well. I'm going to do my best to make my audio sound as good as possible. So, constructive feedback is always appreciative. Anyone that's watching the early videos of these, uh, let me know what you like or dislike. That way I can try to improve on my videos. I really want to get some good quality videos for you guys. And build an audience. <laughs> so, here we go. Welcome to the takeoff and basic handling training flight. Today, you're taking the A10C up for a spin. In this lesson, we'll perform a standard takeoff followed by some basic maneuvers at medium altitude. Press the spacebar key when you are ready to begin. Alright. Oops. <laughs> spacebar to proceed. That's the other thing I've noticed that sometimes uh, the AI doesn't like to detect. Things will I'm happen rather quickly once you begin to roll, so let's review the takeoff sequence. After a final check of the instruments, you'll begin to roll at max engine power. Your main focus will be on using nose wheel steering to maintain the aircraft on runway center during the roll. Once the rudders become effective above 50 knots, you will disengage nose wheel steering. At 120 knots, begin to raise the nose by gently pulling back on the stick and setting a pitch angle of 10 degrees on the ADI. This will be a safety critical element of takeoff. Pulling up too fast can lead to striking the aircraft's tail on the runway or lifting off with too much angle of attack, leading to a stall and possible crash. Once the aircraft is safely airborne and climbing, raise the landing gear and flaps. Accelerate to 180 knots and maintain the speed in the climb to altitude. All right. Prior to starting the takeoff roll, a number of final checks are performed to ensure the aircraft's safe operation. Ensure the anti-skid switch is set to on. If not already done, turn on pitot tube heating on the environmental control panel. It's on. So now hold down, down the wheel brakes by pressing and holding the W key and increase throttle to 85% core RPM. Monitor your flight and engine instruments for any abnormalities. Look around the cockpit and check the caution lights panel to ensure no malfunctions are reported. Press the space bar key to proceed once everything checks out. There you go, so that's 80%. Looks like we're clear on that sp side. Let's make sure ailerons are good. Rudders are good. You can see it right there in the back moving. So we're clear on that aspect. So like I was about to say earlier, um, 
the AI tends to not be very good at uh, understanding when you hit spacebar or in between maneuvers and stuff. So sometimes, like, I'll, if I do something, you might not realize I did it. So if I run into those aspects, I'll be skipping over them, which might happen on this mission. But yeah, just to let you guys know. So let's uh, continue the next part. You are now ready for takeoff. Take a note of your current heading as you will maintain this after takeoff. To begin the roll, release the wheel brakes and advance the throttles to max. Alright, so, <clears throat> full throttle, maintain heading, remember to take off uh, steering, raise up to 10, per, uh, 10 on the ADI, and we should be able to take off with that, so let's go, full throttle. Use careful nose wheel okay. steering commands to keep the aircraft running straight down the center of the runway. All Press right. the hold task pinky button or insert to disable nose wheel steering. Gently pull back on the stick to raise the nose to 10 degrees pitch on the ADI and hold it. Maintain 10 degrees of pitch. Raise the landing gear by pressing G and the flaps by pressing left shift plus F. The landing gear horn will sound while the landing gear is in transition. Adjust your pitch angle to maintain 180 knots indicated airspeed in the climb. And check the vertical velocity indicator to monitor your rate of climb. Your desired rate of climb will depend on a number of factors including the aircraft weight, range and altitude of the steer point. However, 180 knots indicated airspeed is a good average climb speed. There we go. Climbing pretty easily. There's not too much need of Maintain running. a heading of 300 degrees and 180 knots. Level out at 5,000 feet. Right. Scan Maybe your right. instruments vertically from the HUD down to the ADI and HSI, and then horizontally across the front dash from the airspeed indicator to the altimeter and vertical velocity indicator. Approaching 5,000 feet, let's level out here. We'll pick up some airspeed and max engine power. There we go. Flying over water can be disorienting, so let's turn inland. Turn right to 040. Turn to 040. Watch your altitude. Maintain 5,000 feet. Which we are. We're at 040. Let's talk a bit about airspeed. While you may want to fly at maximum speed to get where you're going as fast as possible, you have to keep in mind fuel consumption and designated times of arrival. As such, you will generally fly at speeds less than maximum and preferably close to your cruise speed which is the most efficient speed for your current aircraft payload and altitude. Mm -hmm. Throttle back a little bit so we're not over speeding. So see this is one of those moments that I'm at a good heading. Zero four zero. 5,000 feet, good, good uh, airspeed, and we're not going to the next part of the mission. So, cool thing about having a, a stream running, I can double check on the left side and make sure I didn't miss anything on the on what he was saying. While you're flying at the maximum speed to get to where you're going. You have to keep in mind a full fuel consumption and designated times of arrival. Let's try to decelerate. There are a number of ways you can reduce airspeed, including reducing engine RPM, opening the speed brakes, and pitching the nose up to climb. For now, let's simply reduce engine power. Pull the throttles back and watch the airspeed indications on the HUD and front dash begin to decrease. Alright. You can see the RPMs lowering. Airspeed's lowering on the heads up. Good. Now let's accelerate by advancing the throttles back to max. All right. 
right. So now you'll see the RPMs on the bottom right dashes go up as we accelerate. Back to max. Now we're accelerating. Oh, lower my elevation a little bit here. Now let's perform a climb. Take the nose up to 20 degrees of pitch by referencing the ADI on the front dash. Climb to 12,000 feet. Alright, so nose up to 20 degrees. Watch the altitude and airspeed readings on the HUD and instrument panel. Take note of the altitude increasing and airspeed decreasing. Check the VVI to monitor your rate of climb. It's critical to maintain control of your airspeed or you will quickly approach a stall scenario. If your airspeed begins to fall below 160 knots, reduce your climb rate by lowering the nose to a smaller pitch angle. There we go. Alright, we're lowering under 160 knots, so let's lower... The A-10 it. does not have a very high thrust-to-weight ratio, so it cannot zoom climb like fighter jets. However, what the Hawk lacks in engine power, it makes up for in engine durability and endurance. Level out at 12,000 feet. Alright, let's raise up a little bit. Getting close to 12,000. So that's when we're start leveling out. There we go. There we go. Autopilot is so useful for these moments. We're kind of off course on the heading, so what we're going to do is readjust a little bit. Make sure we're going towards where we're supposed to, hopefully. No, we not. Let me check the map here. That's why. There we go. That way we're following the waypoints here. I'm going to lower a little bit because we were at the right elevation and at a good airspeed. So I'm going to throttle back see if I can't catch the next part of this while we're getting back down a correct altitude. Currently at 12 angels, but we have to lower down a little bit to get even while lowering our max airspeed because I believe we shouldn't be going that fast. All right, let's start leveling out. Perfect. There we go. I'm going to bring us down to 160 knots to see if that will trigger the next part of the mission. Because as you can see, we're at a very good elevation, decent airspeed, and the AI is not continuing. Alright, 150. Around 120 is stall range, so we'll probably go down to that speed and see if it'll, it won't trigger. As you can see, the autopilot is automatically trying to fix our elevation compared to our airspeed because it's trying not to let us fall too hard. There we go. We're stalling. And we still haven't gotten the AI to say anything, which is interesting. So what we're going to do is just get to 12,000, stay there, and we'll wait a little bit to see if uh, the next part of the tutorial continues.
Because we're really close to the what they want us to be at. Throw it back a little bit. There we go. Look at that. <laughs> Literally 10. There we go. There we go. That's, that's fine. So what I'm going to do is now that I'm waiting, let's check the, the stream, see what happens. What happened here? We are waiting for a long period of time. Alright. The A10 does not have a very high thrust to weight ratio, so it cannot zoom climb like a normal fighter. That's the last thing he said. Alright, it's critical. Falls below one stage, reduce your climb once you Angle and pitch. Our airspeed's good. I don't know. Very odd. And that was the last thing he said. Leveling out at 12,000. And it's not triggering the next part of the mission. So, let's uh, see if I can't figure it out why. Let's try full throttle. We're about to pass the waypoint. Once we pass it, we're going to switch to the next waypoint. Maybe that will trigger the next part of the mission. I'm literally at 12,000 feet, and he's not wanting to continue. That's so weird. I can see myself. The airplane is trimming to the right for some reason. I don't know why. Alright, so what we're going to do is do a turnaround here. See if that'll help get the mission to continue. Head back like if we're heading back to the airport to me. See if that doesn't fix our little issue here. Alright, let's level out. Head back to 12,000 feet. Grab the next waypoint. Oof. Pulled a little bit of G's on that one. So what we're going to do is pull back on the throttle. We'll try another stall again. Because I've noticed every time I've stalled, it kind of does help get the next mission going. 
or task or objective. So let's see if uh, that'll help. It's very odd. I don't know what's causes these stalls with him. But the with my trainer not telling me what's what to do next. If not, we're going to have to call it here because that's pretty much what it is. Is uh, just pretty much uh, how to take off and the general basics on how to fly is what he's teaching us. So it's not too crazy. We can uh, skip to the next tutorial. Warning, autopilot. Yeah, I know, I know. Did that by accident. See, right now, by now, it should have, should have automatically, would have been doing the next part of the task. The A-10 service ceiling is 45,000 feet. However, given the nature of the A-10 design and function, you are likely to spend most of your time in altitudes below 25,000 feet. Took long enough. The next maneuver will be a dive. Before we begin, keep in mind a couple of things. Although we are 12,000 feet above sea level, the surface of the earth can be a lot closer, so we'll only drop about 5,000 feet and recover at 7,000. Also, our speed will increase rapidly in the dive and we need to be careful not to overspeed the aircraft. Overspeeding is highly dangerous and can lead to catastrophic structural failure. So Pull the throttle back and push the stick forward to make your pitch 20 degrees nose down. Watch your altitude decrease and speed increase as you dive. Be cover at 7,000 feet. It's like a roller coaster ride. So level up at 7,000. Man, we're picking up a lot of speed right now. Coming up on 7,000 feet, level out. It's crazy because it almost makes me feel like he wants me exactly at 7,000 for him to want to proceed. Seven thousand twenty. Let's see the same thing I did last time. Throttle back. Wait for it. stall. And hopefully he'll detect that and continue. It's a nice view up here, though. Um, I think we're flying over Batumi right now. I believe that's Batumi Airport. I thought Batumi Airport was over there, though. Let me uh, get a closer view. I thought Batumi was over there. I'm pretty sure Batumi's over there, though. Not sure which airport we're passing by right now. to a stall.
Warning, autopilot. For our last maneuver of the day, we'll try a level turn. Turning is not difficult, but turning well does require attentiveness and coordination. The goal of a level turn is to complete the maneuver with minimal deviation in speed and altitude from your initial conditions. A level turn will consist of initial roll input on the stick, followed by a slight pull and rudder input into the turn to maintain altitude and minimize side slip as indicated by the slip ball on the ADI. However, too much input on either the stick or rudder will quickly increase drag and angle of attack, leading to a drastic loss of speed and potential loss of control. Exactly. We'll perform a 360 degree left turn from a heading of 040 at 7000 feet and 280 knots. Go ahead and set the jet to these initial conditions. 7,280 at 404, left hand turn. So it's full throttle. And then we'll get to 040. Pretty close to right, around zero four zero right now. It's lower elevation here. Way above where we need to be at the mark, but we are at lower airspeed, so this will help us get our airspeed back up to where we need to be. Throttle back a little bit so we're not overpassing two eighty mark. Alright. Let's start leveling out leveled out too much Come on. all right 740 at 040 pretty close to the number that zero four zero seven thousand at 280 can't really beat that let's see on our heading marker here which is oops sorry it's actually above me yeah we're at zero four zero 280. All right, <laughs> we're like right on it. It's lower elevation. It wants us to be at that zero four zero. Now we're under it. Jeez, I'm playing with the ball a little too much here. Come on. You wanted me to be at 280. I'm at 290. I was on 280 for a while. So the only thing I can do to fix this again, go for a stall. See if he'll realize that I was at that speed and marker and elevation, and hopefully we'll continue on. If not, like I said, we'll just skip it. The computer 
in this game is not perfect, I guess. Let me get my head a little bit back here. There we go. So we're going to go for another stall here to see if it'll continue on. Stall is at 120, 110 I would say is the actual stall limit on this on this guy with no flaps down because I believe I can probably get a little bit better with flaps down. Like I said, we're going to wait for the stall, see if he realizes that I was at the marker. Watch, we're around 110. Warning, autopilot. And there goes the stall. Throttle back up. Stay at zero four zero. Climb to seven thousand. And if that doesn't work, I'll just run the the little course, and then we'll continue the next tutorial. This is pretty much the end of it. Is he wants us to do a 360 degree left hand turn without losing too much elevation, airspeed, or um, yeah, airspeed and elevation while making a 360 degree turn. So we're there. And he still doesn't want to get the next one going. So we're just going to run the the course ourself just to show that that's pretty much what he wants us to do and then we'll go to the next tutorial so let's keep at the right airspeed here lower down get to 7000 level out it's close enough all right 280 7000 360 left uh, degree left hand turn so try that Elevation a little too high there. Airspeed is lowering consist uh, quite a bit. Oh, I think I just passed. No, I did not. <clears throat> I'm gonna try one more just for the sakes of trying to get it, getting it close. I do need practice on getting level turns. All right, so 7,000. Trim a little bit because A10 kind of wants to pull up on me a lot. There we go. That's better. Might help a little bit too. There we go. Let's get close to 7,000 here. Throttle back so we're not too far on the airspeed. Say close to 280. There we go. Alright, so let's try this one more time. My 040, 360 degrees, left hand turn. Alright. There we go. There we go. Stay at the right elevation here.
Uh, I'm off by a couple degrees. Alright. But, that's pretty much it. It's a 360 degree left hand turn. I just need more practice on it. <laughs> so I can get them, get the level turns a lot better, but we'll continue the next tutorial here. All right, so next one's navigation. This one's actually pretty together for the next training tutorial. Make sure my orientation's good. Fix my face a little bit. There we go. And navigation part. Welcome to the navigation training flight. I've engaged the autopilot to keep the aircraft level and on course, so please do not touch any input controls outside of the training commands you will receive. In this flight, we'll overview the navigation systems of the A10C and practice navigation procedures. All right. Man, he talks slow when he wants to talk slow, but it takes forever for the next parts to go through. If you find it hard to hear my instructions over the background noise, exit the mission and turn down the world and in cockpit sound sliders to about 50% in the options menu. Increase throttle to about 90% core RPM to keep the aircraft above 250 knots indicated. Yep. We are at 90. The A-10C is equipped with a complex navigation suite consisting of a number of different systems. The oldest of these, originally installed on the A-10A, is a Heading Attitude Reference System, or HARS. HARS is a gyro platform navigation system and accumulates significant errors as the aircraft is maneuvered in flight. It can be reset accurately only in level flight and no acceleration. Because of these limitations, HARS is considered a backup system used in case of primary navigation system failure. The primary navigation okay. system of the A10C is the embedded GPS, INS, or EGI, often pronounced IGI. The IGI integrates a traditional inertial navigation system, INS, and a global positioning system, GPS. Each of these two IGI components can function independently of the other. However, they are designed to work together to provide accurate worldwide position and flight navigation data. Finally, the A10C is equipped to home on traditional radio navigation systems such as TACAN, Tactical Air Navigation, ILS, Instrument Landing System, and ADF, Automatic Direction Finder. The primary control panels used to configure the navigation systems include the Navigation Mode Select Panel, NIMSIP, on the front dash and the Control Display Unit, CDU, on the right console. In this mission, we'll also work with the TACCAN panel on the right console. In order to minimize the time spent head down configuring the instruments instead of looking up and out of the cockpit, the A10C features the upfront controller, UFC, below the HUD and the CDU repeater page on the MFCD. These allow you to manipulate CDU data without having to touch the CD. Navigation information is displayed to the pilot on the HUD, the TAD and CDU pages of the MFCD, the CDU display, and the analog ADI and HSI instruments on the front dash. All right. <clears throat> Let's begin taking a more detailed look at each component of the navigation suite. The NIMSIP, located in front of the control stick toward the bottom of the front dash, is used to select the navigation system used to feed data to the instruments and what type of navigation points to home on. Specifically, the top row of select buttons selects between HARS, IGI, and TISL, target identification set laser. You will generally use the IGI as your primary navigation system, and you can see that it is selected by default. Like HARS, TISL is an A10A legacy system that has been replaced on the A10C by the ANAAQ28 Lighting 2 targeting pod. 
Along the bottom row of the NIMSIP are buttons to set the type of navigation points to home on. These include STRPT, steer point, ANCHR, anchor point, TCN, TACAN beacon, and ILS, instrument landing system. During flight operations, you will usually navigate toward a steer point, so STRPT will be the preferred selection. TACAN and ILS are used for air base approaches and landing, and anchor point is usually the mission bullseye. In review, the selections of source navigation system on the top row and the type of navigation points on the bottom row determine which system provides steering information presented on the HUD, ADI, and HSI and toward what type of navigation point. All right. The PTR switch is used to stow away the pitch and roll steering bars as well as the course warning flag on the ADI. The two homing lights to the right of the select buttons indicate VHF or UHF radio homing when either radio is used in ADF mode. The next item we will consider is the TAD page, currently displayed on the left MFCD. The TAD includes symbology for your aircraft, currently in the center of the display, a flight plan course line, currently running along the center from top to bottom, and various other indications, which we will discuss separately. To work with the TAD page, we need to set it as our sensor of interest, SOI. To do so, press and hold the Hold Task Cooley Hat left command or the H key on the keyboard. Alternatively, you can press the TAD OSB 15. When set as SOI, the display will become inscribed in green. Yep. Get that green outline. That's how you know you're soy Okay, now that we have control of the TAD, Let's first scale the map out so we can see our entire flight plan for better orientation. To increase the TAD scale, press the Hold Test Demons Down command or the N key on the keyboard until the flight plan is visible. Three presses in this case. Three. You can now see our flight plan consists of six waypoints, indicated by square symbols connected by course lines. The currently selected waypoint, called a steer point, is colored yellow instead of green. Also note the TAD range in the upper right corner of the display, currently 40, and the map scale. The range value indicates the range to the outer ring of the display. It's important to understand the concept of waypoints. Waypoint is the generic term for all navigation points of interest, which can include the current steer point, all flight plan waypoints, mark points, and anchor points. Generally, you will be following a flight plan that consists of a number of flight plan waypoints, one of which will be usually selected as your current steer point. Using the CDU, you can edit, create, and delete waypoints either as part of a flight plan or as independent waypoints. Yeah, it just means that you can customize, add waypoints. Very straightforward stuff. Most games, other games, utilize waypoints in a similar fashion. This is just a lot more in depth. Oh, and I believe uh, for customization, you can customize it here on the CDU. Let's try performing the most basic navigation yeah. function of cycling <laughs> through the flight plan waypoints to select a current steer point. This can be done either by pressing the steer rocker key on the UFC or the steer switch on the CDU. I've highlighted both and you can try pressing both. Watch the TAD display and the data block in the bottom right corner of the HUD as you cycle through the flight plan waypoints. Press it. the space bar key to proceed it. once you cycle through the waypoints. So the, you can do it by hand, by up here, and you can actually see all the waypoints being switched around on all the dashes. And alternatively, you can do it over here as well, which is a lot harder and it's not going to be as used as much. It's the same thing. As well as if you're using a hold test, hold test D DMS up can do it. If you have uh, the HUD soy, which I unfortunately didn't have it at that moment, but you can see now I'm swapping over. All right, let's continue on. You can also cycle waypoints by using HOTAS controls. To do this, first make the HUD soy by pressing the HOTAS coolie hat up once or the U key on the keyboard. An asterisk will appear on the left side of the HUD when it is set as soy. 
With the HUD set as SOY, you can cycle through the waypoints by pressing the HOTAS DEMUS UP or DOWN commands repeatedly. Mm -hmm. Set waypoint 3 Copignati as your steer point. That's steer point 3. And you can see it move over As you as can well. see indicated on the HUD steer point data block, the HUD waypoint has a custom ID Copignati. If you cycle to the following waypoint, it also has a custom ID POTI. Mission waypoints are assigned a default ID of MSN XXX, where XXX is a numerical value starting with 001. Mark points are also assigned an alphabetical ID starting with A. Custom waypoint IDs can be created in the mission planner prior to the mission or in flight by using the CDU waypoint edit functions. Waypoint IDs can also be used to search for waypoints in the CDU database. Make sure you have Waypoint 3 Copignata set as the steer point, and we'll turn north toward it to continue our flight. I'm going to disengage the autopilot so you can make the turn. Alright. Autopilot is off. You have control. Go. Autopilot is on. Let's review steer point indication presented to the pilot. Starting with the HUD, the destination index indicates the position of the current steer point as a small square. That's how you know. When not set elsewhere by the pilot, the current steer point is also the center point of interest, SPI. On the TAD page, the SPI is displayed as a wedding cake symbol currently corresponding with Waypoint 3. It's kind of hard to see right now, but that's a little wedding cake is what he's talking about. And this is on the TAD page. In the bottom right corner of the HUD display is the navigation data block, which indicates information regarding the steer point. Starting with the top line, the following is displayed. Radar altitude valid through 5,000 feet AGL steer point number and ID, steer point distance to go and target elevation, steer point time to go, TTG, and time on target, TOT Delta, also current time. When a steer point has a designated time on target, DTOT, you can use the TTG and TOT numbers to make sure you arrive on time. In that case, you will also see a desired airspeed indication added under the airspeed indicator on the left side of the HUD. Yeah, in so the bottom center of the HUD is the heading tape, which indicates the current heading and desired heading bug to direct the pilot to the desired heading of the selected waypoint. Bearing, heading. That's actually where the nose is looking at, and this is the heading or bearing. When the steer point is outside the HUD field of view, the destination index will be latched to the side of the HUD in the direction of the steer point. To see this indication, set waypoint 4, Ponte, as your steer point. That's what he's talking about. The destination index is now latched to the left side of the HUD and includes two pieces of additional information. The degrees of turn remaining on top of the index and the steer point range under the index. So when you switch waypoints, if it's off screen, it'll be here. If it's further closer to the right side, if you change the speed from the steer point to a different location, the destination index on the HUD will change to a tadpole to avoid confusion with the target designation queue TDC symbol. To see this indication, let's designate a speed point on the ground. Press and hold the hold test slew control down or the period key on the keyboard to slew the TDC down toward the bottom of the HUD. Then press and hold the hold test TMIS up command or left control plus up arrow keys on the keyboard to designate a speed just ahead of the aircraft. So by the way, this is something that took me a while for some reason to figure out. It was really annoying. Uh, you can't SPI if you see the little square thing. If it's a, if it's if you see this square and it's an X in the middle, it won't let you SPI it or change the point of interest. So you got to make sure that it's actually not with an X in the middle. So you see there, we go got to go a little bit further down probably. Let's see if I can. Let me see. So it's not gonna let me if I do that. I don't believe so. So let's see. 
See, this is what I had a problem before, too. Because if it has that little square like that, it won't let you. I'm trying to get it to not do that. It took me a while to get this figured out. It's weird. I can't. It won't let me <laughs> be anything around here. There we go. See? So I can't. So I guess anything above this area it won't let me. But. If I bring it down here, I can. Can't do it there, but I can do it here. The HUD is now indicating both the Tadpole Destination Index and the speed location as a TDC with a line leading to the total velocity vector. The Tadpole is latched to the side of the HUD in the direction of the steer point, and the Tadpole tail is indicating bearing to the steer point relative to your current position. That is very annoying to get it to figure out how to work it. I'm already flying over it. Let's now discuss the CDU. First, right. set the right MFCD as a CDU repeater. To do so, press the hold task coolie hat right command or press the K key on the keyboard twice to cycle the CDU page or press the CDU OSB 13 on the right MFCD. As you can see, the right MFCD is duplicating the display of the CDU. Exactly. We can now work with the CDU directly or use the UFC and MFCD commands to view and edit CDU data. The CDU is currently displaying the waypoint page as indicated by the page title in the top left corner of the display. The top line also indicates the name of the currently active flight plan. F1 in this case, and the waypoint number of the steer point. The rest of the CDU display on this page is used to present data on the waypoint indicated on the third line, which is not necessarily the same waypoint as our current steer point. This allows you to view and edit waypoints without deselecting the active steer point information on the HUD and front dash instrumentation. For example, to view or edit the data for our current steer point, which is waypoint 4 Pulte, we can select this waypoint on the CDU by searching either for the waypoint number or the ID. Let's try searching for the number first. To do so, press the 4 key on the UFC. You will see the number appear on the UFC scratch pad at the bottom of the HUD in the CDU page of the MFCD. Then press OSB 19 to enter the number into search. And it changes it. You should now see detailed information about waypoint for Bote on the CDU, including the waypoint elevation, desired time on target, and coordinates. Note as indicated on the bottom right corner of the CDU page, this is page 1 of 2 of the display. To see the additional information on page 2, press the function key on the UFC followed by the data down rocker key. Page 2 displays additional waypoint information and options, including command steering indication scales, steering origin destination setting, desired time to go, desired time on target, and vertical navigation setting. Once you've looked over page 2 of the waypoint page, return to page 1 by pressing the UFC function key followed by the data up rocker key. There we go. Now let's try the alternate method and search for a waypoint by ID. Let's also try using the CDU instead of the UFC to enter the data. Using the keyboard buttons on the CDU, type in KOP as the initial characters of the ID for waypoint 3, Copignati, and then press the line select key R3 on the CDU to enter it into search. So I entered it, searched it. Copignati. While we are working with the CDU, it's a good time to cover the important functionality of the steer point and page select dials on the Auxiliary Avionics Panel, AAP. The steer point dial selects between waypoint databases. When set to flight plan, the CDU will cycle through flight plan waypoints only. When set to mark, the CDU will cycle through mark points only. 
When set to mission, the CDU will cycle through all nine mark points in the database, including the flight plan waypoints. Note that the flight plan will appear on the TAD page only when the dial is set to flight plan. The page dial selects between main pages of the display. When set to waypoint, the waypoint main page will be displayed, indicating information on the selected waypoint. When set to steer, the steer point main page will be displayed, indicating information on the selected steer point. When set to position, the position main page will be displayed, indicating information on the aircraft's current position. The other page is used to edit data in the CDU. When not set to other, all of the other pages are read only and no data can be entered into the CDU. Yep. Can't edit if you're looking at the pages like that. It has to be an other if you want to edit. Set waypoint for Apoti as your steer point. I will disengage the autopilot so you can turn west toward waypoint 4. Autopilot is off. You have control. Alright, so let's start heading to waypoint 4. There we go. Leveled out. Autopilot is on. To navigate a flight plan accurately, you need to fly along the desired course line for each waypoint. To do so, set the HSI course arrow to the desired course for the waypoint and follow the course deviation indicator CDI on the HSI. For example, our flight plan calls for a course of 270 for waypoint 4. To obtain correct CDI indication, set the HSI course to 270 by rotating the HSI course set knob. Press the spacebar key to proceed when the HSI course is set to 270. All right. 270. And I'm trying to see where he got that from. Let me see. Let's zoom in here. Not sure where he got that from. Two seven zero. Maybe it's on the next page on the data rocker. Copenati scale. Let's go back to page one. So yeah, I'm not a hundred percent sure where he grabbed that from. So if any of you guys know, let me know in the comments. Because <laughs> I'm not really sure where you got 270 from. The only other thing I can think of is maybe on the compass. All right. The HSI course deviation indicator, CDI, and the ADI steering bar will now direct you toward the desired course line. In order to approach the waypoint on the desired course, you would maneuver the jet to follow the ADI steering bar toward the CDI until the CDI is aligned with the course arrow pointing toward the steer point and the steering bar is centered on the ADI. Press the space bar key to proceed to the next lesson topic. Let's now try homing on a TACAM station. To do this, first select TCN navigation mode on the NIMSIP. Now we need to set the desired TACAN channel. For example, to home in on the Sanaki Takan station, we'll set it to 31X. First, roll the mouse wheel up over the left channel selector knob to set the second channel digit to 3. There we go. Roll the mouse wheel up over the right channel selector knob to set the third channel digit to 1. Now power up the TACCAM receiver by setting the mode dial to TR, Transmit Receive. Set. The bearing pointer 1 needle on the HSI is now indicating bearing to the selected TACCAM station and the range indicator on the HSI is indicating the range. You can also hear the TACCAM station's ID being transmitted in Morse code. You can turn down the TACAN ID volume using the volume knob on the TACAN control panel. If a TACAN approach is desired on a particular heading, turn the HSI set course knob to the desired course. 
The HSI, CDI, and ADI steering bar will then indicate steering commands for the set course toward the TACAN station. Press the spacebar key to proceed when set. We'll end this lesson here. You can continue to practice using the navigation systems to navigate the flight plan waypoints. Yeah, so this one here is a lot more in depth because there's a lot of stuff you can do with the navigation. So I'll be practicing this a lot more so I can get these more understood. Because it's a lot. It's a lot to take in. But we got through this next tutorial. So let's uh, let's do the last part of the tutorial, which is landing. But it was at least a good go. So let's go to the last part. Alright. Last part of our training session for today is going to be landing. but the hardest part is landing. Alright. <clears throat> Fix my face. And let's go. Welcome to the landing training mission. In this mission, we'll practice landing procedures in the A-10C using an instrument landing system ILS approach into Batumi Air Base. I've engaged the autopilot to keep us level and on course. Maintain airspeed around 200 knots as we prepare the aircraft for the approach. If you find it hard to hear my instructions over the background noise, exit the mission and turn down the world and in-cockpit sound sliders to about 50%. Yeah, so we're going to slow down a little bit. Make sure we're not over speeding here. Landing is one of the more challenging aspects of any flight. A good landing will require careful control of the aircraft and use of various instruments in the cockpit for a precise approach under the direction of the Airbase Air Traffic Controller ATC. A landing consists of navigating to the destination airfield using TACAN or GPS navigation, configuring the radio to the airfield's ATC frequency, configuring the ILS receiver to the airfield's ILS frequency, navigating to the final approach fix as directed by ATC, and finally performing the final approach to fly the aircraft precisely down the glide path toward the touchdown point of the runway. Press the spacebar key when you are ready to begin. It's a lot to take in, but we'll, we'll get through this. <laughs> because we covered TACCAN navigation previously, we'll use the GPS component of the Iggy to navigate to our destination in this lesson. The CDU Divert page lists the four closest air bases programmed in the CDU as selectable waypoints. To access this page, let's first open the CDU page on the right MFCD with OSB 13. All right. Now open the CDU Nav page by pressing Function followed by the 2 Nav key on the UFC. Press OSB 10 to open the Divert page. The Divert page displays the closest four air bases with their corresponding bearing, range, and time to go numbers. Press OSB 16 to make Batumi Air Base your steer point. You can now use the navigation data block in the bottom right corner of the HUD to monitor the range and TTG to home plate. As indicated on the CDU FLD Info, Field Info page, the ATC radio frequency for Batumi is 131.000 MHz. We now need to set our VHF AM radio to this frequency. Press the space bar key to proceed when the VHF AM radio is tuned to 131.000. See, so that's the one thing is I can't find on this info page where is 131.000. I don't see what where that would actually be here. Like, is it one three one zero zero zero? Don't understand. Not one hundred percent sure about that. So, if any guys that are watching or are watching this, uh, let me know in the comments, please. Really would like to know where where he's getting those numbers from. Unless he's getting them from over here. Let's see. Let's test it.
don't see anything as far as the location bearing 215 destination TOT Batumi 213 let me see let's go to the next page anchor point steer point waypoint yeah see I don't know where it would be let's go back to other we're we'll gonna go just because he already told us where it's at but I really would like to know where it's actually at 13 1 or 3 or 1 3 1 0 0 good we can now contact Batumi ATC for initial approach instructions however before we do this let's also set up the ILS panel for the approach ILS is a ground-based precision approach system that guides approaching aircraft to the runway using vertical glide slope and horizontal localizer radio signals. ILS beacons operate at specific frequencies that need to be tuned to by the approaching aircraft. Batumi ILS operates on 110.30 MHz. See, I know on the I ILS panel, roll the mouse wheel over the left frequency wheel to first set the frequency to 110. Now roll the mouse wheel over the right frequency wheel to set the frequency decimal to 0 .30. Power up the ILS receiver by right clicking over the left frequency wheel. Let's now check in with Batumi Approach and call our flight inbound. Press the Hotest Mic Switch Forward command or left alt and num plus keys on the keyboard to open the VHF AM radio menu. Now press F5 to select the ATC radio page. Then select Batumi Approach and finally F1 to call inbound. Take note of the inbound instructions you will receive. Press the spacebar key to proceed once you've received the vector to the final approach fix from Batumi ATC. Batumi, Hog 1 1, inbound. So our heading is supposed to be 230 is where we have to head towards. We have 35 miles to get there. I'm not sure what the QFE stands for. So that's another one I need to know about. But let's continue. Press the escape key on the keyboard to exit the radio menu. We'll return to it in a few minutes. We can now navigate to the final approach fix, which will be approximately 10 nautical miles off the runway. Pattern altitudes vary depending on the airbase and local conditions, but are generally between 2,000 and 3,000 feet AGL above ground level. Whenever you're ready, press the spacebar key and I will disengage the autopilot so you can make the turn to the heading provided by ATC. Ooh. I'm going to show you something here. I actually kind of forgot where we were heading again. So let's request for them to retell us where we're supposed to head to, which is requesting azimuth. Batumi, hog, one, one. Request navigation assistance. Hog, one, one. Batumi, ADS, you're heading 226. All right. Autopilot is off. You have control. Turn to the heading provided by ATC. Maintain altitude. We also need to set the HSI course to the runway heading of 130 degrees in order to get correct CDI indication for final approach. To do this, roll the mouse wheel over the HSI course set knob to set the HSI course needle to 130. Alternatively, you can press and hold the left mouse button while dragging the mouse left or right to turn the knob. Watch the HSI bearing window for the exact bearing. Let's also scale the TAD map out a bit so you can see the airbase steer point on the map as we approach. Make the TAD soy by pressing OSB 15 on the left MFCD. Then press Hotas Demis down or the end key on the keyboard twice. Maybe that's where we're supposed to head towards. So 
Set the HUD as so on by pressing the Hold Task Cooley Hat Up command or the U key on the keyboard. Because you'll want to concentrate on flying the aircraft once we turn on final, let's discuss now what will happen as we near the final approach fix. You want to hit the approach fix at approximately 2,500 feet and 230 knots indicated airspeed. As you approach the final approach fix, the CDI needle on the HSI will begin to move down toward the course needle. You will turn toward the runway to keep the two needles aligned to pick up the glide slope along the runway heading. As you turn, you will bleed off speed to below 200 knots and extend the landing gear and flaps for landing. Press the spacebar key to proceed when ready. Let me, uh, because I got the wrong heading here. It's supposed to be at 230. Once the ILS signal is picked up by the ILS receiver, the glide slope deviation indicator will appear on the ADI. You will need to center this needle by gaining or losing altitude to see the pitch steering bar on the ADI for precise pitch control down the glide path. The bank steering bar will also appear on the ADI for precise directional control. Press the spacebar key to proceed when ready. Once established on the glide path, Use the angle of attack indexer to maintain on-speed approach, around 120 knots or slightly less, because we are coming in light today. On the AOA indexer, the up arrow light indicates speed is too fast. The down arrow light indicates speed is too low. The O donut light indicates proper speed. If both the donut and an arrow light are on, the speed is only slightly off from on-speed. Press the spacebar key to proceed when ready. Alright, so if, if you see the arrow down here, it means you're too slow, too fast, and on point. In addition to ILS, the Tumi Air Base is equipped with a Precision Approach Path Indicator, PAPI Light System. PAPI is designed to assist the pilot in maintaining the glide slope during final approach. It consists of four lights lined up horizontally near the runway threshold. The lights indicate either red or white. Your goal is to see two red and two white lights going from left to right. More red means you are below glide slope. More white means you are above glide slope. Press the spacebar key to proceed when ready. We'll keep the aircraft on autopilot until we get a little closer to the approach fix. If you wish, you can press left control and Z keys to accelerate time. Press left shift and Z to return to normal time. All right, so what I'm going to do here is get us into position instead of speeding up time. So we're just going to try to get into position. That's where we're heading. We are now approaching the final approach fix. Select ILS mode on the dim sip. Alright, select ILS. We're not in the range. The red glide slope warning on the ADI indicates that we are not currently receiving an ILS signal. The flag will be stoned and the glide slope deviation indicator needle will appear when we are closer to the runway. Whenever you're ready, press the spacebar key and I will disengage the autopilot so you can descend to pattern altitude. Autopilot is off. You should by now see the Batumi runway at about your 10 o'clock. When the runway is closer to your 9 o'clock, you will be nearing the approach fix. Check that the anti-skid switch is set to on. Descend to 2,500 feet. Maintain between 230 and 250 knots. Let's fall back because we're really high. And that's the anti-skid switch is on. So we're just going to get into correct altitude here just 2500 and then lower our, our airspeed to 250 let's get a little bit of speed break going on getting close
Still got a little ways to go here. Start leveling up a little bit. There we go. So now we're in perfect range. The CDI is moving toward the course arrow on the HSI. Turn left toward the runway. Reduce power to begin gradually dropping your airspeed toward 200 knots and below. If you overshoot the runway heading, perform a course correction in the opposite direction to realign the CDI with the course arrow. The glide slope deviation indicator indicates that you are below the glide path. Pick up some altitude to center the needle. Can see the needle if not already done position. set the aircraft to landing configuration set the flaps to the down position by pressing the F key twice and lower the landing gear by pressing left shift in the G key on the keyboard fly the aircraft to keep the pitch and bank steering bar centered on the ADI monitor your airspeed to maintain approximately 120 knots Still too high. There we go. Means we have to slow down a bit. Gotta start slowing down a lot more. We're getting there, we're getting there. Slowing down, we gotta slow down. We're going too fast. So. Batumi approach is now transferring us to Batumi terminal control for landing clearance. To request landing, press the Hotep mic switch forward command or left alt and num plus keys to open the VHF AM radio command menu. Then press F1 to request permission to land. Once cleared, press the escape key to exit the radio menu. Batumi, Hog, 1-1, one, one. request landing. The AOA indexer is indicating you are on speed. Keep the donut light on as you approach. Perfect speed. We're a little bit, uh, I believe, too high. As you approach the runway threshold, the pitch steering bar on the ADI might begin to oscillate slightly. Do not chase the needle. Maintain the glide slope to the touchdown point. Getting the glide slope on point right now. Speed's a little bit on the high port, but I believe he said not to worry too much on that. Brought it back just a tad. Lower down a little bit more. There we go. There we go. Altitude, altitude. We're good. Hopefully. It's the first time I'm actually getting hit close to this number. Let's uh, hope I don't crash and burn here. Pretty on point here. 
I'm gonna go with air brakes as soon as I get to the landing spot. See so if we can get closer to the middle here. Going too slow, maybe? Going too fast. As you near to just a few feet above the runway, reduce engine power to idle and gently pull the stick slightly back to flare the aircraft. Alright. Flaring it. Touchdown. Now lower the nose for nose gear touchdown. Alright, nose Use gear. Use the rudder or X and Y keys to keep the aircraft running down the center of the runway. Engage the wheel brakes by pressing and holding the W key. Once your speed is reduced to below 70 knots, engage nose wheel steering in WS by pressing the HOTAS pinky button or the insert key on the keyboard. Taxi off the runway using one of the taxiways to the left. When taxiing, avoid holding down the wheel brakes while turning at the same time. Keep the ground speed under control to avoid damaging the tires, gear mechanics, or tipping the aircraft to either side. what we're doing. Get off the road as soon as possible. That was a pretty good touchdown I would think. Not too bad. Could be, you know, could be better. I was trying to go for, a, you know, right off the middle there, but I think that was good enough. And it's one of my better landings. So we're just going to taxi off. Uh, there's, there's an exit close up over here. And I'm just using very minimal rudder control and there we go we got our exit point right here so I'm just gonna turn off slowly gotta make this look professional as possible there you go follow the line keep the line right down the middle I don't know what that was but Follow the taxiway line to the parking spot. Looks like the crew chief is on his way over there now. Alright. Oh, here we go. Nice turn in. See the crew chief running to position. Keep following the line. There you go. And then follow the line into our parking space. There we go. Ooh. We'll now shut down the aircraft. Bet First, you, the set the anti-skid and pedal tube heat switches to off. Turn off the ILS receiver by right-clicking the left frequency dial knob. Turn off the IFC and the kick cue on the AHCP. Turn off the left and right MFCDs. Turn off the countermeasure system. Retract the flaps to the up position by pressing left shift and F twice. Turn off the Iggy and CDU on the right console. Spool down the left engine by pressing the right Alt and N keys. Monitor the EMI panel to check for a safe spool down. The core RPM should drop down to zero and the ITT to approximately 200 degrees. Anticipate a slight heat soak back as the engine stops. There we go. So just monitoring temperature core speed of this is uh, the left engine side now spool down the right engine by pressing the right control and in keys okay. right engine we look clear you can actually see it spool down which is pretty freaking cool Master caution. Shh. Set the inverter switch on the electrical panel to off. There we go. Turn off the battery. Battery's off. Turn off the VHF AM, UHF, and VHF FM radios. This concludes the landing training flight. Press the escape key to exit the mission. Nice.
completed a tutorial here, nice and easy. I must have scared you over there, huh? Got a little close there, buddy. I bet you he was going to shit his pants if I would have gotten any closer. <laughs> but yeah, that was good. This will conclude our training session for today. Uh, hopefully, day, day number three will be the actual uh, training of the CM, uh, CDMS and uh, the MFDs, as well as the lighting pods and starting into rocketing. So that's going to be a lot of fun. So hopefully you guys will go to tune in on that. But yeah, this was a lot of fun. The best thing I can only say is uh, these trainings, just practice them every day. That's what I've been doing to try to keep up and get better every time. And you can notice just from the first video how badly I did that one compared to how well or more smoothly today's stream went. So if you guys liked it, let me know, please, because uh, I'm always uh, I always welcome any kind of feedback. So thank you on that side and. <laughs> Justice over here, throwing it on stream here. <laughs> oh yeah, DCS is a whole nother world when it comes to learning how to power things on. This is literally the office of the A10 here. So yeah, Star Citizen, I it's not gonna be as complex, but I, I I do hope it's a little more a little more complex than what it is already. But yeah, it's not as bad as this, where you literally have to do combinations of a bunch of buttons. <laughs> but yeah, thanks for enjoying the video, and I'll see you guys on the next one. <laughs>